very important to suffocate guys this is very important it has to be below your heart level can anyone tell me why and if i can move your fingers you're pretty much done So what I do is guys, you know, I, I don't carry three different bottles, it's too much. I carry one liter flux, okay, very hot. Before I put water, what I do is I put hot water here, I prime it, okay. So when you put next to it the very hot water, that will last for more than 36 hours. You know, you buy good flux and what you do is, here is a bit, um, a bit dry. But with one liter, you can make three liters on the mountain. What you do is you scoop the snow, put up it. It's nice to drink. If you need a hot water, it's already hot water. But if you take all those nulls in a uh, bottle and all that, imagine if it's frozen and that's frozen, how are you going to drink? You don't have gas cooker, you don't have all these things to cook. So, again, it is very, very vital. All those, you know, nulls in and all that is. is Guys, I never, I never take them in any at all meter bit. It's just a hassle, it's just extra weight. But for a year to put in your bed and stay warm is okay, all right? <laughs> and also, like you know, you got little one. You can use the little one because on Everest and big climbs, you can just put it there. It's, it keeps your chest warm and you can just drink and you can all that. It's just extra, you know, thing. And guys, you know, on, on the mountains, there's no minerals on the snow. So have one of those. Put it over there. Specifically, you know, on bigger mountains, it helps. If I feel cold, okay, if I feel cold, first, first thing is you have the Gore-Tex. Because as soon as it blocks the wind, you feel good. So I put this on, and if you still get cold, you put one of these. See, guys, if invest in the kit, guys. You have a base kit, it look after you. Over there, you know, you, feel, you know like, for example, you know, let's say you, know, you want to go a bit of tight or you want to do the lazy and you can buy the right kit. You don't want to put a billion dollars there, no one can get you that kit. Okay? <coughs> so you put this one, that one, up to camp two is perfect. The way you pack your base layer, always against the preparation. You only need this when it's cold. And imagine you haven't done your homework, you've been lazy again. You have to now, like, you are already frozen and now you have to put this on. You haven't opened the, the, the frozen guys. This one, if you touch even this one with a, with a small uh, gloves like this, your hand can go mm. like that. Okay? Preparation. But if you've got time here, you open all these things, no problem. With a big thing, you can just like put it over anything. Crown with big boots, whatever it is. And now you have it, right? And then now you, you attach some of this here with the big gloves. You can put it down. The biggest thing is again, small things matter on the big mountain in preparation. So now moving into um, the other stuff I have, okay. Every time when I'm on the mountains, this is my working gloves. This goes under my armpit. If you got a few thousand meter peaks and all that, and if you have climbed in a very terrible weather conditions, you can. You can do whatever you want guys, but again, this you need them when your hands are cold. So, you know, when you hike over here, whatever it is, I don't care if it's in the backpack, or on the summit first, it is under your armpit. And the reason is why I told you exactly. It's there to like boom, boom, you warm, you crack on. All right? Good. So socks, guys, what I'm gonna wear is like one of these to get to camp to. This is my summit first. When I come down to camp, hopefully this will be dry and come down. You, you, you cannot take million socks, you know, on the mountains. So, so what I wear on the summit is I wear my um, <coughs> what we call is thermal, like one of these polar trek. Guys, this is this is very good design. So what it is designed is it is designed this one to soak up the the sweat, right? And it doesn't come out. It kind of you know like you know like it dries on itself here and it is highly breathable, it's very good. I have used this since I started. And this is the one that I have since 2014. No. <laughs> no, it's, it's a new one. Um, yeah, and what I wear is I wear that one, 
Like I can category, I probably wear that. This one, my summit suit, gloves over there. And um, here you don't need it, but if you want guys, what you can do is, um, you can have either one of this, a smaller one that goes in your pocket. The thermos can be on Everest, it can be with the guy. And when, when we stop, it's just there, you know, like, you'll see all that. You can have this, you know, but yeah, I don't think it. Um, so, and what I do is what I, I, I always carry is two, uh, two pair of, you know, glasses. One glasses and the goggles. The glasses always stay in my pocket. If somehow, you know, like, uh, so the goggles always stay in my pocket, depending on the weather, one of them will be in my pocket, so it's warm. So what you do is, is if it's super steam, I just get it out, put it in my pocket, let it settle itself, I get the other one, put it on and I crack on. And that kind of you know, fix itself. And if you are feeling warm and all that, you can just quickly clean it up when you have a break and all that. But don't try to like, <laughs> you know, all that, so it's like, you know, it's, uh, and then it's, if the weather is good, you can just take it off and, you know, you can wipe it out here and all that. But if the weather is terrible, again, I'm talking about the worst weather conditions. Just take it out, it goes in the pocket because that will be frozen anyway uh, and the reason why this this um thing get frozen is two reasons one if your buff is not tight enough and you are not breathing through your mouth you have to breathe through your mouth you you breathe deliberately downwards okay it's, it's, a, it's a massive technique you got to master it uh, otherwise you know like it will come up and then again and then and you have to stay more disciplined when the when the weather is even bad because if the weather is good, you can still take it and wipe it out. If the weather is good, bad, you know, you want to do that, your finger will be like frozen, everything. It's a disaster. And if I can move your fingers, you're pretty much done on the bigger mountains. If you do that, you know, you cannot absolutely, because you cannot fit the ropes through your, uh, your, your guide and, you know, like it's just a, you know, full on vertical rock face and how are you going to come down? That's why, you know, accident happens. Um, so that's that. Now, I kind of have my warm hat. I always have it, but I always carry my, you know, wear my cap because in a cap, you know, protects it from the sun, you know, buff, it's perfect. But if it's super cool again, and we have to push through again 65 to, you know, kilometer per hour when you speed, then you, you need to do this stuff. Yeah. And every time, whatever we go, you know, the guide will know the weather conditions and the guide must prepare it. Like, for example, when I took the light reel on, people couldn't get out of the tent, but my people can do it because they had the right gear. You know, they had one of this jacket inside their summer suit. The goggles face was super protected. Everything was looking to detail. So, you know, even sometimes when you climb and then you want to change it, don't change it because you got big gloves, everything. You do it nice and that's it. You don't want to be flapping around up in the mountains. Okay? I didn't even let Asma pee because it was so cold. I'm like, any secret I said, you want to pee? I said, no, no. Because because of that, we're gonna have to help you. You're gonna get frozen. It's, it's 70, 65 k. So no. So again, in this one, you have to prepare. If you're going for a long one, why don't you pee? You know, before you get out of the tent, everything can be forced. Don't get scared, guys. I'm just, yeah. I'm just telling you because you know you learn for the bigger things. Yeah, like you know, I can't stop. So ski poles, guys. Again, little things. You know, every ski post is different. You have got a little knot here. Sometimes people don't tie it good enough. And what it does is, when you want to put the pressure, the stick keeps going inside. And it can be such an irritating thing. Again, little things. Um, and one thing I would like to say, guys, is with the ski post, it has to be just around that, below your heart level. If your hand is too high, like this, blood pressure. Yeah. Your heart is struggling to put the blood in your in your in, 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 in your in your extremities, in, in your fingers. If you go like this and you're super cold, you are already freezing, and then you, you are not your your heart is struggling to supply the blood over there. You will have frostbite immediately. So it, this always has to be below your chest level. And when you go over there, which I will show you the technique tomorrow, you kind of use your triceps, you know, easy. You see some guys, you know, just walking like this, you know, very relaxed. It's a technique. Again, it comes with loads of practice. Okay, and these are great tools because I know some of these special forces guys they don't want to use it when I when they first come. In the ice people, because we never use it, right? 
Yeah, as soon as we started going <laughs> higher, they were like, <laughs> oh my god, it makes such a difference. And the other one is struggling, you know, like running, you know, heels around, breaking beacons where, you know, you've got so much oxygen, is different. Over there, everything is, is next level. Again, okay, talking about the gear, guys, harness, invest. You know, you have light harness. This is like so easy to take it off. You can take it off, you know, whatever it is, you don't have to like start to fall on there, you know, like all this drama. You know, just got cool harness, lightweight, on clip, 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 and it's there. Super light. I always carry my, my rescue system. You don't have to, guys. And I'll always have, you know, my guide rope and a couple of carabiner and all that. You just need like some something really cool harness and, you know, locking carabiner. That's, you know, some, some people can come and help you. Rather than having two head tours, guys, you know, I got one of those, it's super light, and I have the spare batteries. These batteries always stay in your one pocket, right? And when you put this one, again, when it goes, it's discovered by my buff or something, so the battery is always protected. I'm trying to, you know, sometimes you could be in mountains for more than five six hours, more than that, you know? You never know. So, those are a piece of English for safety. Um, this is a great device, you can connect anywhere, everywhere around the world. If you got one of those guys, you know, download the app. I'm not sponsored by this, but I'm just saying because uh, you download the app and it's easy to text and all that, navigation, everything, it helps, you know? Very important piece of kit, guys. This is very important, specifically on, on big mountains. Zero. The boots. You've got to try your big boots. Okay, and because you know sometimes you know people don't wear in the lower altitude or they don't wear you know during the training regime and what happens is uh, you go for the summit course and you got blister. You are already struggling to put one foot in front of another and then you already have blister. You, you just want to give away, right? So make sure you kind of wear them. Know what you're doing and and if you have wear that boot before, you know where you're gonna get the blister. So you can mark with the blister tape whatever it is, but you prepare well for all that stuff. Again, crampon guys, I know you all have different type of crampon, this is a bit too technical, but uh, <coughs> I advise you to get one of those because, again, it's a simple fit. Here, take times to fit your crampons in your boot. Whenever you fit the crampons, um, look, this is very easy, like, it just goes over there. Um, two seconds. And, when you put it on, every time, you get to hear that click. So it's good. If you have all, all, another crampon, what you do is you have to go there in the cold and you know, take your fingers, you know, again, obviously I'm gonna be the one who's gonna be doing it, so I'll do it. It's inside in my house. It is for our I've done, I've, I've, I've put crampon in terrible weather for some people up here in the mountains, but good gear makes the life easy, right? So it's just over there and it just goes over here. Done. Quick. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it, guys. You know, it's, it's quite important to have the right gear on the big mountains. Yeah. Most of you know, small top tips. So one of the example is we ask you to come here with the summit suit, down suit. If you say to some that to some other company, they will laugh about you. They will like, oh, you are going on I can catch you. Why? Why are you going with the summit suit? Okay. For us, you know, every thing has to be put into consideration. For example here, like when it's windy, it gets very cold here. And the people, I had the season where professional mountaineer, sponsored athlete came here, they're trying to summit, they turn around, and my, as a guided trip, all of them summited. Why? Because you need to have the right kit and equipment to be able to push and mitigate the weather, mitigate the, the that rich element to summit. That's one example. So, but there are a lot of things, you know. No, no, you, you need to wear that and this one. Yeah.